The X95J is Sony's top of the range LED TV in 2021 and one step away from their OLED models. So is this the sweet spot in the Sony lineup? Let's find out. Hey guys, Jonathan here from Smart Home Sounds, an audio visual retailer based in the UK. And today's video has been in high demand from you guys in the comments. We're finally gonna be taking a look at the 2021 Sony X95J full array LED TV. Now, as we've seen from other TVs in the 2021 lineup, 2021 has been a huge year for TV improvements. So I'm really excited to share with you our findings from testing this TV over the last couple of days. As you can see here, I've got the 75 inch model here, which is huge. So if you enjoy this review, then drop me a like and subscribe if you wanna catch more content like this and join the community. Don't forget, we are an authorized Sony retailer, so the link to this TV will be in the description below if you decide this model is right for you. And as always, you'll get Sony's five-year warranty and free UK delivery, as well as any other promotions that are live at the time. If you do have any burning questions, pop them down in the comments below or reach out to us directly. And don't forget to let us know what you think of this TV. Okay, let's show you what's coming up in this review then. So we're gonna be covering a close-up look at the design, its specification, its gaming capabilities, sound quality, and comparisons with the model below from Sony, the X90J, the model above, the A80J, and Samsung's QN90A, and much more. So if you're ready and sitting comfortably, let's get right into the review. Now this is gonna be a pretty chunky review, there's lots to cover, but as always, feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps below if you want. Starting off then with a brief overview of the Sony X95J then. So it replaces last year's X-H95 model, and it's the flagship full array LED model sold in three sizes of 65 inch, 75 inch, and 85 inch for RRPs of 1999, 3199 and 4499 respectively. Now these prices do tend to fluctuate, so check our website for the most up-to-date pricing. So straight off the bat, if you're looking for a TV smaller than 65 inch, you'll want to drop down to the X90J, which we have done a review of, or go the other way and look at their entry level OLED model, the A80J. Again, which we have also reviewed on our YouTube channel. Now, sitting at the top of the full array LED lineup, this is the closest you can get to OLED without actually being OLED. And we'll cover if it's worth saving the cash on OLED or if OLED is worth making that leap a bit later in the video. So let's quickly walk through the model name then and what it means. So the XR refers to the fact that it uses Sony's brand new XR processor. X refers to it being an LED model. The 95 is how high up it is in the range. In this case, it is the highest. And then the J refers to it being a 2021 model. And then you can disregard the U at the end as that isn't important. Now, being a full array LED model rather than standard LED, you've got many more backlights spread across the screen, which means the TV has more control over more areas of the screen. So it can localize where the picture should be deep black and where the picture should be vibrant color, for example. Of course, because of this, they are more expensive than standard LED and are actually more complex to manufacture than OLED. In our OLED versus full array LED YouTube video, we go into much more detail about what the differences between OLED and LED actually mean for your viewing experience, which I would recommend you check out if you're on the edge about making the step into OLED or not. The general verdict is that OLEDs are much richer and have higher contrast ratios, meaning that you can achieve true blacks and true whites and more vivid lifelike colors than LED. For watching movies in particular, OLED is noticeably more immersive. However, it does tend to be more suitable for darker lit rooms. And as LED tends to be slightly brighter, they perform better in brighter rooms. However, I wouldn't purchase either based on that alone as there are so many more factors to consider. So do check out our full array LED versus OLED video for more help there. So if we take a closer look at the TV then, I'd say on first impressions, it does look very well constructed and well put together with this metal finish uh, around the outside, which they call a one slate design. And it is an upgrade on the lower X90J model. The rest of it is like a glossy plastic and overall it takes on a clean minimalist design. The bezel is nice and slim, and while the overall slimness of the TV is good for an LED panel, if you put it alongside the Sony A80J OLED model, you can see the difference, so it will protrude slightly more from the wall if you are wall mounting it. The legs come in three different positions, which include the standard position, 
the soundbar position, which raises the screen by a couple of inches, so a soundbar doesn't intrude onto the bottom of the screen. And if you opt for either this 75 inch or 85 inch version, you also get this narrow position, uh, which is very handy. It certainly was very handy for us. If you're standing on a smaller TV stand, uh, but still want to benefit from the larger size TVs. And unboxing the TV is not the easiest in the world we found given how large this TV is, but certainly better than a lot of other TVs. And on the whole, Sony TVs are always well packaged and simple to get set up. The legs are really simple to fit on. They literally just push into place. And once you have done that, there's really not much else you need to do in terms of physical setup, unless you're wall mounting it, of course. Now we got it out of the box and on our TV stand pretty quickly or so. Um, we did share more of that on our Instagram earlier this week. Give us a follow if you want a sneak peek at what we're reviewing. So if we take a look at the back of the Sony X95J then, um, the 2021 models have this new grid pattern, which I personally prefer over last year's design. And then lastly, if we take a look at the remote, the X95J comes with their premium backlit remote, which you do not get in the model below. So it is worth about 70 pounds or so online, so it's nice for this to come as standard. The main benefit, of course, being backlit. So if you're watching in the dark, it's easy to spot. A nice little feature as well is that you can use voice control to control certain things on the TV, ranging from volume to changing channel, or to even change the brightness to save you searching through the menus. And there is actually a microphone built into the TV and to the remote control, so voice control is completely hands-free. Speaking of menus and navigation, we really liked the new Google TV interface. It's intelligently laid out, and I could find what I wanted quickly, and if I couldn't, I could just use voice control. Being Google as well, you'll either love the personalized features or you'll hate them. Now, I personally like that. Um, I like that Google knows what I like and what films might interest me. You've also got a choice of over 5,000 apps, so more than anyone could need in a lifetime. The only downside is that there are a fair few ads which annoyed me after a while. My advice would always be to use a separate streaming service like an Apple TV, Sky or Amazon Fire Stick and things like that. A couple of other notable features on the uh, UI is Google Chromecast built in, FreeSat and Bravia Core. So you might not have heard of that last one being Bravia Core, which is Sony's own streaming service built into the TV. Now you may find this useful or you might not, but you're sure to find something that will interest you. And if you do purchase the TV, Sony are giving away five free credits to spend on movies. And on there, you will also find exclusive backstage footage and interviews and things like that if you're interested in going behind the scenes of your favorite movies. So let's delve into some more useful features that you'll get with this TV then. So the X95J features Dolby Vision, features Dolby Atmos with HDMI eARC and support for DTS-X. It also offers a Netflix calibrated mode, which is exclusive to Sony, and that is awesome for Netflix content. It cannot be understated that if you're a regular Netflix viewer, this is a great mode, and it will make all of your Netflix exclusive content just that more immersive. Now, a huge update in um, selected 2021 Sony TV models is the addition of the brand new Bravia XR processor, which is a significant improvement from the X1 processor in last year's models. What's great is that you don't need to pay top whack prices just to access that new processor because it is available from the X90J upwards. The big improvement to the Bravia XR is that it uses cognitive intelligence and that is supposed to replicate how we see and hear things in the real world. So it might focus your attention on a particular area of the screen. Of course, we were all skeptical about this. However, if you compare last year's X-H95 with this year's X-95J, the differences become more apparent the more scenes that we watched. Somehow it gave the content more life and it made it more 3D. So if we dive into picture quality a bit more then, obviously we've tested quite a few Sony 2021 models now, including the A80J and Master Series A90J and then also the X90J. So we've got a flavor of how Sony models perform visually this year. We have to say there is quite a difference between the full array LED X90J and the OLED A80J, but the X95J closes that gap. It has a few extra features that the X90J is missing, including a higher level of XR contrast booster, extra wide angle technology, and extra anti-reflection. So what do all these mean then? Well, the contrast booster maximizes the ratio between the luminance of the brightest whites and the deepest blacks. So if you put the X90J and the X95J up against each other, the black is slightly darker on the X95J, again, adding to that realism and pretty much as much as you can expect from an LED model. 
Extra wide angle is a really useful one if your seating position is more than 30 degrees off axis from the TV. In TVs without this feature, if you have a setup where you might have three sofas in a U-shape surrounding the TV, the people sitting to the side onto the TV would lose out on some colours and contrast, but the X95J compensates for that and it's still thoroughly watchable from wide angles. And then finally, extra anti-reflection reduces the glare on the screen which might be caused from the sun shining in or a lamp. This technology actually cancels that out, so it will show deep blacks without distractions showing up on the screen, and in our testing it worked really well. Just be aware though that extra anti-reflection is only included on the 75 inch and the 85 inch models of the X95J. The last thing to mention is that there is truly a wealth of customization options for the picture quality. Now, I won't go into all of them now as it would make this video extremely long, uh, but do let us know in the comments if you would like us to do a sort of calibration style video to make the most out of your picture. Now, thanks to the LED panel, this TV is great for rooms with lots of windows, so a light, bright family room, that kind of space. I did experience just a little bit of blooming when I tested it in the dark, particularly in very bright scenes, but it didn't put me off this TV and it's definitely nowhere near as bad as similar panels in this market. And on the whole, I would say that both SDR and HDR content looks great on this TV. Now let's cover sound quality then, which will be important for those of you who are not going to be using a soundbar or at least trying out the TV's own sound first. Now it must be said that sound quality of TVs has needed to get much smarter over the years as TVs are becoming slimmer, manufacturers have a harder job of getting decent sound quality out of their TVs. I would say that Sony are up there with the best sounding TVs out of all the major brands because their acoustic multi-audio technology works incredibly well. There are two sound positioning tweeters at the back of the TV that allow the sound to pass across the screen and two full range X balance speakers also boost the audio performance and a separate subwoofer, which is not something that you get in the X90J. So the bass is noticeably stronger in the X95J. Overall, we liked how the X95J sounded out of the box and it does a reasonably good job of sending the sound to the right area of the screen for a more realistic audio experience. Acoustic Multi Audio Plus doesn't come close to the acoustic surface audio that you'll find in the OLED TVs where the screen actually becomes the speaker, but a feature that we really like is 3D surround upscaling, which upscales your standard stereo or 5.1 channel audio to 5.1.2 to offer surround and height channels. Now, before I get too excited, none of this compares with a dedicated surround system or soundbar, but if you're teetering on the edge of getting a soundbar, you may wish to try out the TV speakers before buying the soundbar. As you never know, you might actually be pleased with what it offers on its own. Everyone wants different things. One final thing of note is that it also offers acoustic auto calibration, which uses the built-in mic in the remote and it optimizes the acoustics for the room, which I guess is quite similar technology to Sonos's Auto TruePlay tech, but again, we struggle to find any noticeable differences. Moral of the story, a soundbar is always the best case scenario if your room and budget allow. So what's the X95J like for gaming then? Well, if 65 inch and above will work in your room, the X95J will make a very viable set for gaming. If you're looking for something smaller, you'll want to look at the X90J or A80J, which come in smaller sizes. Both the X90J and X95J get two HDMI ports at 4K 120fps and offer very low input lag, especially if the TV is set to game mode, which turns off the post-processing in the TV. Annoyingly, HDMI 3 is also the eARC port, so if you've got a soundbar and you want to connect two consoles to the TV, like both an Xbox and a PlayStation, you're going to need to do some manual cable switching, which might get annoying over time. If you have a soundbar which offers a 4K 120 FPS pass-through, then you're all good. But if not, you would either need to swap the devices around, or we would recommend opting for an HDMI 2.1 friendly AV receiver, which can pass through 4K 120 Hz signals, but we are not sure if this would cause any issues in terms of lip sync. ALLM, which is auto low latency mode, is already rolled out to the X95J. However, variable refresh rate, VRR, is due by the end of January 2022. If you're going for a PlayStation 5, there's also some other amazing features for gaming, of course with the PS5 also being a Sony product, like 
auto HDR tone mapping, and that's where the PS5 automatically recognizes a Bravia XR TV and then switches to the best HDR setting on the fly. You'll also get auto genre picture mode, which switches the TV automatically to game mode to minimize input lag, and then will switch back to standard mode if you're watching movies through the PS5. Those updates are due to be rolled out by the end of January 2022. So if you're watching after January 2022, hello to future me, but also check whether the spec has been updated with these new features. In the absence of VRR, I found that the instant game mode actually does enough for me personally for PlayStation, and it is good for 120 FPS. I think if the lack of VRR at launch is a deal breaker for you and you don't want to wait for that, then you might want to consider if G-Sync or FreeSync on LG and Samsung TVs might actually be what you need. On the whole for me, gaming on this TV has been great with nice, bright and vibrant visuals in game mode, which makes everything more enjoyable and engaging. One pro for this TV actually is that the out of the box color accuracy is really decent, which is great if you're not one for getting deep into the settings and adjusting everything there. So many of you are probably umming and ahhing about whether to go for OLED because after all, the X95J is the furthest you can go in the Sony range without actually being an OLED TV. The first step into OLED territory is the A80J, which if we compare the 65 inch X95J with the 65 inch A80J for price, you're looking at 2699 for the A80J and then 1999 for the X95J, so around 700 pound difference. Again, that's RRP, so do double check the current pricings for this. I would say that is pretty significant, however, there are some quite significant differences in the performance. If you put the A80J in a dark room, the differences are stark. Colors are brought to life, every aspect is more vibrant and pops off the screen, bringing you closer to a cinema experience, which is why I'd say, if you're the sort of person who likes to sit down and watch movies in the evening, the differences in OLED versus the LED will be more noticeable for you. However, I would say a big plus for the X95J is in the brightness levels. LED TVs are renowned for how bright they can go, which will appeal to people watching the majority of their TV in a well-lit room. While you can adjust brightness in the OLED and the A80J is the brightest OLED that Sony have been able to produce, you will still get better natural brightness in the X95J. So if you watch the majority of your TV in a bright room and maybe watch a lot of regular TV or sports, the X95J will be all you need. There are some other notable upgrades on the A80J like Acoustic Surface Audio Plus, which we touched on earlier, where the screen actually becomes the speaker, which is a drastic upgrade on sound quality if you're not gonna be using a soundbar. The A80J also retains a notably more premium aesthetic being slimmer and having less bezel. Ultimately, it is a personal decision between them, and I think if budget is available and you take your movies seriously, you will find the OLED A80J is a better investment overall. However, if you're coming from maybe upgrading from an old plasma TV, the difference between that and Sony's 2021 LED models are huge on all dimensions, not only for picture quality, but usability and smart features. It is very easy to be seduced by what OLED can do. And I'd say if you wanna stretch the budget, then go for it. But the X95J will present itself as a huge upgrade if you're coming from quite an old TV. It also must be said that current promotions will also play a huge part because sometimes you might actually find the OLED much closer to the budget of the X95J, in which case that difference may then become worth it for you. Some of you might also be looking at last year's X-H95 model and wondering how it compares. So I won't spend too long on this comparison. However, I've summed up my thoughts on it for you. In essence, the X95J is not that dissimilar from last year's X-H95 model. Aside from the X-H95 coming in smaller 55 inch and 49 inch models, and this year's X95J starting at 65 inch, there are some improvements which largely stem from that upgraded XR processor. You've also got that 4K at 120 FPS, thanks to two lots of HDMI 2.1 connections, which is a great improvement for gaming. It will also get VRR by the end of January 2022 as well. Sound quality does take a step up in the X95J because unlike the X-H95, which used downward firing speakers, the X95J utilizes front facing speakers and also added a subwoofer into the mix. So the audio immersion jumps up quite a bit on the X95J. 
I would say though that the differences in overall picture quality between them is not groundbreaking. So if you can snap up a deal on previous years, XH95, and you're not really into gaming, then I would say go for it. And then what about the model down from the X95J, the X90J? Well, first of all, the X95J starts from 65 inch. So if you're looking for a smaller TV all the way down to 50 inch, the X90J is the way to go. Picture quality wise, both are full array LED models, so the differences are all fairly subtle. The X95J is brighter than the X90J and it has better anti-reflective coating. The contrast is also boosted on the X95J, so the blacks are even blacker. And it is also better for wide angle viewing, so if your seating is off axis, the X95J comes in the better option. In terms of gaming, both have HDMI 2.1 and both are due to receive VRR by the end of January 2022, so it is a matter of optimising the subtle details in gaming compared with it being stark differences. For sound quality, you do get an extra subwoofer in the X95J, so a tad more bassy. And the design does look and feel a bit more premium on the X95J thanks to that metal edge stand and seamless edge bezel. For those that have watched my previous videos on Sony TVs, you'll know I love that backlit premium remote. Where is it? Oh, here it is. I love this remote. Price-wise, if you have the budget for both, then unless you're going to be in a very bright room, then you'll probably prefer the visuals that you get from the X95J but it will come down to budget and if 65 inch models and above will work in your room for the X95J. Now you might also be comparing the X95J to similar models from other brands. So most notably, I think people will be torn between this TV and the Samsung QN90A. Now the Samsung is available in many more sizes ranging from 43 inch to a whopping 98 inch. I will pop up a quick table with the sizes and price points now for you. On the whole, I would say that the QN90A offers better blacks as it does a better job of dimming with 792 dimming zones compared with 60 larger dimming zones on the X95J. However, I think that the Samsung is an example that deep dark blacks and contrast isn't always best and it might not be right for everyone. Personally, I find that you lose out on some of the details and highlights with the QN90A in favor of providing those crushing black levels and I would rather take the hit with slightly less dark blacks and get a better balance of both. I would say, however, that the Samsung does have better peak brightness, so that's something to note. And as a few other reviewers have noted, the QN98 does seem to offer slightly worse uniformity in their panels than the likes of the Sony. So you might get some blotchy areas, which I know would put a lot of people off. Sony on the whole seem to have better quality control and just a more uniform screen. So let's start to finally wrap up then. 2021 has been one of the biggest years in a long time for TV improvements, but what do we think of the X95J? Well, having already seen what OLED can offer, we have been spoiled and I do think that once you go OLED, you'll struggle to go back. But considering the X95J is only a step down from OLED, it is truly impressive. And you do get a lot of features and upgrades over previous models like extra wide angle, extra contrast ratios, and X anti-reflection. I think if you're looking for a 75 inch or 85 inch model, then this might be the sweet spot for you. If it's a 65 inch you're after, then do have a look at the pricing at the time of purchase, as we've seen this price closer to OLED at times, and in my opinion, I would opt for OLED then. But I can see how some people may prefer the feature set that Full Array LED offers if that's right for their viewing and home. The fact that you get the same processor on Sony's Master Series 8K Z9J TV is a huge plus and it will ensure this TV will be as future-proof as possible and software updates will ensure that it's always getting better over time. It is a very bright TV with excellent anti-reflective coating, but being that close to OLED, I can see why a lot of people will also be tempted to upgrade to the A80J. The downsides are that there's no mini LEDs and the dimming zone count is the same as last year and not as many as others on the market. You do also have to consider whether the sizes are gonna work for you. So I think I've covered everything I wanted to. I hope you found that helps. If it did, please consider subscribing as we've got lots of useful content on our channel as well as lots more to come. We're really interested to hear your thoughts on whether you'll be purchasing the X95J or if there's another TV that you're looking at instead. Don't forget, we stock this TV as well as others on our website, so I'll link that below, as well as any of the other models that we've highlighted in this review. And as always, if you want any more personal help, our team are always happy to help, so do get in touch. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.
Okay, yeah, so you squat down a little bit, mate. A bit further. Yeah, and again, more. I can't. I'm not going to be able to do this the whole video. <laughs> Move a bit, a bit to the left. No, 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 your, your left. Oh. Your left. Oh, my quads. Yeah, there's no way we're getting this TV in this shot. Can we get a new camera crew, please? Yeah. <laughs>